Can you please describe to the jury then what happens when you get there? Uh, when I get there, there's several deputies there, and we, uh, two deputies were there prior to me and had made some arrangements to get a, uh, an older German Shepherd from the property. Uh, as soon as I arrived, I saw uh, animal control taking the German Shepherd out of the back mudroom of 443. Uh, as soon as the animal was secured, several deputies and myself went into the house to clear it for uh, any possible evidence or suspects or victims. So you, were you part of that team that searched the, the residence? Yes, sir. Okay. So what did you guys do? Uh, we just went room to room, cleared everything, uh, probably 30 or 40 minutes. And like I said, right then, we still had no idea what was going on. We just had two bodies in the car. We didn't know what to expect at that house, if anything, at that house. So uh, after clearing it, we started coming out. Uh, other detectives started fanning out and looking for evidence around the property. Uh, I was getting ready to start taking pictures of the property from outside in. Uh, on the way out the back door, I looked down and I saw a, uh, like a blue, just a regular blue plastic tarp. And I saw some blood on the tarp. So there was a Something blue, I thought it was a shirt or something, it ended up being some jogging pants that were right next to it. So I went to move the jogging pants, move them out of the way where I could get to the, to the tarp. Now there's a, a dog bed where that elderly dog slept at right there, and it was partially over the pant leg of these sweatpants. So when I went to move them, they wouldn't move. So I was like, why can't I pick these pants up? And I picked up the dog bed about six inches and you could see that the pants went down into a, some kind of cellar door. Uh, everybody kind of went on alert right then. It was kind of odd that there was a cellar there. We didn't know it was there and there was a piece of pant legs trapped in it. So we moved the dog bed away. Uh, at that time, the counterweight system on that cellar door, which was huge, probably twice as big as this counter and we finally got it lifted and opened up. As soon as we opened the cellar door, uh, there was a white male at the bottom of the steps, obviously deceased, uh, facing up, uh, stiff, uh, hands were like this, legs were curled back underneath him, the looking, eyes were closed but body was up. You discover the body, what do you do then? What are your responsibilities? Uh, as soon as we did that, uh, we secured the scene. Uh, I started taking photographs from the, the outside of the residence in, just trying to cover everything, and of course took pictures of the body. Uh, several teams were searching the house for evidence, potential evidence. So as I got called around, uh, I would be called to one spot to take pictures of something after I took the initial photos of the entire house. Uh, once we discovered the body, everything stopped until I got pictures of everything in the house. Uh, as soon as I got everything in the house, I was called to the back. I think I was called to the driveway next to the house first. Uh, there was a spot of blood and there was a cell phone. Uh, photographed it. Uh, shortly after that, there was another spot of blood in the backyard, probably 60 to 70 yards further back than this. Uh, there was a small caliber handgun laying next to that blood. Uh, all that stuff was photographed. Uh, just come back in and started taking pictures of different uh, items that were located by people. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Right. Your Honor, at this time, I would like to introduce for identification purposes, which have already been shown as defense and provided in discovery, what will be marked as Commonwealth's 
Exhibit 95 to 131. Has he already previously reviewed those? He has, Your Honor, and for efficiency, I was just going to have him quickly review them all. I think 30-something uh, of them, and then I'm going to have I think we could consolidate the process of him identifying them uh, when the jury sees them, since you all, you all don't have any objections to the uh, photographs. Are we going to play them on the elbow? Yeah. We are. That's fine. All right. Let's go ahead. Okay. Well, then, Your Honor, I'll just move to introduce uh, Without uh, no objection. You need to show them first. Okay, that's, that's fine. fine. Well, I want to show them to the jury and the witness at the same time, just mm -hmm. for the sure. sake of yes. expedience. Okay. So, Detective Reed, I'll be showing you what is going to be marked as Commonwealth Exhibit 95. Will he be able to see it on this television? He will, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. That way you can just look straight ahead. Okay. That is the exterior of 443 South Main Street, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Phillips' house. And that's taken standing from what, from what direction? Uh, it looks reversed in that it's, uh, no, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just looks, it looks opposite from what it is. Uh, I believe this is the blocks here, or Ed Domsrow's property, and that's a shared driveway that that deputy's car is sitting in. They're just reversed from what the original picture looked like. It's, it's opposite. Now I'll be showing you the smartest council exhibit 96. And can you describe to the jurors what's in this photo? Yes. Uh, once again, it's, it's flip-flopped. This is not what it looks like on the street. It's the exact opposite of this. Uh, this is 443. Uh, this is a shared driveway right there between 443 and Ed Donsero's house. It's, so Ed Donsero's home and Cal Phillips' home shared driveway? Yes, sir. Doug Chenko, the judge wanted to uh, move things along by not having these photos looked at. 
by the defense and, you are, and the witness. Uh, oh, let's go back in. Aware, I'm sure, of uh, much more so than I. Uh, in the digital technology photography age, that photographs that you take with your phone, for example, or selfies or whatever, are usually reversed. Um, and whatever you see something that's written uh, is backwards. So that's what we have here. This device that is being used to uh, put the photos on the screen where they're much easier for you all to see and you can see them all collectively does that. The photos are actually reversed uh, images, uh, but the detective is going to show you the actual photograph so you can see what it really looks like and then the image that you will see in the uh, courtroom here will be uh, a digital representation of it, but it will be, in essence, backwards. Okay? I'm right. sorry, they just look Thanks. different. Okay. Uh, this is a picture of 443 South Main Street. Can you show it to the jurors and describe it? You can, just, you can just do it from your seat. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, this is actually what it looks like when I took the photo. <laughs> and then this was Commonwealth Exhibit uh, 96. Uh, same thing. It's a picture of uh, 443 showing a shared driveway between Ed Donsrow's house is right here, and this is 443. Now I'll be showing you Commonwealth Exhibit 97. Can you show that to, to the jury and describe what you see in that photo? I hope, I hope you all see better than I do also. This is, this is another picture of that shared driveway, uh, 443. And this is actually 457 uh, at Don's Rose. This is just about 15 feet further than that photo I just showed you. This is the shared driveway. Uh, this fence separates uh, Ed Dansrow's house uh, from Mr. and Mrs. Phillips' house over here, 443. If you'll look closer here, there's a picture of what the next photo is going to be, which is a cell phone. And it's just giving you a reference point of where it's at going up the shared driveways. This fence is about 100 feet long, and it divides the two properties. But it doesn't finish anywhere. It's just an open. So it doesn't finish? It doesn't finish back, and it doesn't finish forward. It's just like a 100-foot section of pressure-treated privacy fence. Exhibit uh, this is just a closer view of that cell phone I just showed you. Uh, I think it's an AT&T uh, cell phone. It's not a smartphone. It's not a flip phone. It's just one of those, you know, from 20 years ago or so that just had the buttons on the front, I believe. Uh, there's some blood stains on it, and there's probably a 10 or 12 inch circle of coagulated blood. Uh, underneath it. So there is blood on that phone? 
What, or what I believe, I, yeah, I believe it was blood, yes, sir. with exhibit 100 uh, it's the same photo just with a placard in it uh, nothing's different just a placard marked one this is with exhibit 101 This is a picture leading to the, the mud room of 443 South Main Street, uh, the Phillips home. Uh, that phone you just saw in this picture would be about 45 feet straight that way. And this would be just turning right and looking going into the back mud room of 443. If you'll, can you all see that? I'm sorry. So there's some, this is an overall photo that I'm going to take a close up and there's some drops of suspected blood in that driveway. It's just a reference photo to show you where the blood is at in the next photo. Exhibit 102. Uh, this is a close up of what you just saw. Uh, there's several little uh, markings of suspected blood. Just a close up uh, and uh, a placard too next to it for uh, reference measurements. This is just a little bit further than that last photo. The last photo was right in here, probably 10 feet back from the bottom of this photo. Uh, this is the back door and right here, there's another couple drops of suspected blood. So that door leads to where? This is the mud room to the back of 443. This is the room with the cellar in it, uh, the cellar door where the body was found. Uh, at that time, the unknown person in the cellar. Exhibit 104. Same thing, that's just a close up of the photo that we just showed you for reference and just a placard three for a reference. Uh, suspected blood drops right before you go into the back door of 443. This is a picture just as soon as you open up the mud room of 443 South Main Street. This picture is probably 15 feet further than that last photo with the blood drops after you open the door and go into this area of 443. And can you see the basement 
door from that photo? Uh, not yet, sir. But where is it in that photo? So where all of this stuff is piled up right there, there's a door that goes into the back of the house here and right at the end of this brick wall, there's a, uh, goes into a coal cellar or something. It's right, it's right there. And then there's another door here that goes into the backyard of 443. And in this photo, there's a little placard in, down there. What Can you describe that? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it was. It was a piece of paper, like uh, harder than just regular printed paper. And it had a uh, blood drop on it uh, that looked like it had been wiped uh, by something. Exhibit 106. Uh, that's just a close up view of that number four placard in that mud room back there. Uh, this is suspected blood, and like I said, it looks like it's been wiped by something or something drug across it. Just like I said, just a few more steps into that mud room. You start to see there's just a bunch of stuff piled up here. I'm not sure just working on the house or what, but there's a bunch of debris here. At the end of this brick wall uh, is the, like it's coal chute, I guess is the best way to describe it, but it's just a cellar door is right there. The back door is just a few feet past it going into the back foyer of the house. And that again is the the door going to the backyard of Just a closer up picture of the just debris. There's just a bunch of stuff piled up in this back wall over here. This is actually that cellar door. Uh, the door right here and this uh, glass storm door go into the back of the house. And once again, that's the exit door going into the backyard of 443. Is that exit door locked? Uh, I never tried to open it, sir. I don't know. I would assume not. It was just a storm door. Somebody will be able to tell you that. I just can't tell you that. So this is a closer picture of that cellar door. Uh, this is that counterweight I was telling you that's not attached to it. This ended up being the blue pair of sweatpants that I referenced earlier that I said I could not pull up. There was a dog bed, a brown dog bed that completely covered this. Uh, uh, that's about what's in this photo is just those pants. There's part of that blue tarp that I was telling you about that had blood on it that drew my interest to these pair of pants to try and pick them up anyways.
Commonwealth 110. Uh, just another picture of the cellar door. Uh, nothing significant, just the counterbalance. It wasn't hooked up. And just an overall picture of that cellar door. Exhibit 11. Uh, this is what I saw when we opened the cellar door. Uh, appears to be a body uh, at the bottom of it. You could see one bullet wound on his chest, uh, several towels laying here, uh, two or three, uh, three t shirts, I think, laying to the left of him. Uh, there's a charred area back here. So this is just exactly what it looked like when we opened that, the cellar door. And you said there's towels and t-shirts? Yes, the stuff by the deceased leg right there is towels. And further back up is a, a military olive drab kind of t-shirt and some white t-shirts, if I remember correctly. And can you, Your Honor, may the witness stand? Stand up, yes, right here. Point to the towels and t-shirts. Uh, these are the towels right here. I don't remember exactly how many there were, I think three. I know there was a military color olive drab, if you guys know what those shirts are. And then uh, one of these was like a tank top, I think, and the other one was a regular t shirt. Is that it? Yep. What number was that? 111, Your Honor. Column of Exhibit 112. Uh, this is a, a closer up shot of what ended up being Mr. Phillips. Uh, significance here is large caliber gunshot wound visible here. He's very stiff. This arm's not touching the wood behind him. Uh, and there's just a closer picture of some blood stained t shirts. Uh, he's wearing a frog tog, kind of a fishing rain suit uh, was significant to me was just it was cinched up around his head pretty tight like he had been out in the weather. Did you notice anything on his face? Uh, there were some injuries to his face. I don't know and still don't know what they were. They appeared post-mortem to me. I don't know if, if they were or not. Exhibit 113. Uh, it's just a close up of what I think is a large caliber bullet wound here. Uh, some blood running down his torso that at some point turns hard off to the side of the body. Uh, it's the only thing that is significant about that photo. Uh, a 
little bit different picture of the deceased. You can see his arm. He still hasn't been moved by any of us. He's just very rigid. Uh, all of this wood back here in the back is charred like it burned for maybe a few minutes and then uh, just stopped burning. So that's all I see significant in that. It's a closer picture of the charred wood that was behind uh, Mr. Phillips's body. Exhibit 116. Uh, just a little bit different angle uh, behind that charred wood. This is a just a common paper towel uh, charred all the way around it. Uh, we couldn't see this until after the, the body was moved and I could get further down and to take that picture into there. Just a charred piece of paper towel. That was under the chard? Yes, it was back in behind all of the, the chard. Is it right we'll in the middle? What you talking about? Uh, like I said, it's reversed, but that piece of paper is back in behind the 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 charred area. Your Honor, uh, the body was here, and just behind the biggest log, this was all burnt, and behind that biggest log was this charred piece of paper towel. All right. Can you turn that Yes. Uh, just charred wood. Uh, the body was found up here of Mr. Phillips. Like I said, this was the biggest piece of wood there. You couldn't see this until the, the body was removed by the corner. Then when you got to the side, you could see this back in behind the, the log. Uh, it's another photo after uh, the coroner removed the body out of the cellar. We could see the uh, Mr. Phillips's corpse. This is his that left arm that was back like this. Uh, that's the back side of that arm. We also couldn't see that from the from the earlier photos. So it just looks like that frog tog. A uh, fishing coat just melted from a flame, some kind of heat source. Column of exhibit one eighteen. This is the back door going into the foyer of 443 South Main Street. The cellar is right past this uh, deputy 
straight down that way. This is the cluttered area and right there would be the door going into the backyard just for a, a reference point. Uh, it's a it's a shot away from it. You'll see the next photos. There's some some blood drops, very small blood drops on this door that were found by deputies while they were searching and I was called over there to take the photographs of it. They were on the inside of the door also, the storm door. Right. Let's reverse it again. Right, right in here. Inside of the door. Um, is it one nineteen? Uh, this is just a closer up photo of the exact same thing that you just saw right there. Just uh, small blood drops right by the uh, the handle on the inside of the door. Suspected blood drops. Can you point with your uh, pointer there? Uh, there's a couple little bitty maybe a centimeter or less, uh, or less than a quarter inch, I guess, little drops right there, suspected blood. Come with 120. This is the kick plate on that same door, just the aluminum kick plate at the bottom of it. Uh, looks like about a, a inch, inch long, would appear to be blood smear at the bottom of the door. That's also on the inside of the door. And with your pointer, can you? Mark that on the screen. Right here. It appeared to be about an inch, a little over an inch long. Smeared blood. A suspected blood. Commonwealth 121. This is the entrance to the back door. This is the storm door and the kick plate that you just saw just a second ago. This is the back door to 443 on the mudroom. Right behind this would be that exit door again going out to the backyard. Uh, this is a foyer, carpeted foyer area in the middle. Uh, small piece right there ended up being uh, what appeared to be hair, a clump of human hair, appeared to be human hair. Uh, And where in relation is where the body was discovered? The body? Yes. Uh, right behind this R13 insulation, that door is right there. Uh, as soon as you step out this back door, if you took a left within three feet, you would go down into the cellar. And with your pointer, can you point to the clump of hair. This is just a closer picture of that suspected hair, uh, just with a flashlight uh, illuminating it. Uh, same photo, just closer.
Collins Exhibit 123. Uh, this is a pretty close up picture of the exact same thing with natural lighting. picture of the kitchen area of that house right outside of this door would have been that uh, clump of hair uh, that way would be the the back door just a few feet back that way and it's just an overall picture picture of the kitchen the day we found it how we found it Just as soon as you step into that kitchen and look to the left, this is just a picture of how it looked that day, just the refrigerator, uh, some stuff over here, I'm not sure what it is, it's just a picture of what it looked like as soon as you stepped into that uh, kitchen and looked to the left. This is a picture of a shelf, a uh, little bit taller than me, I'm 5'11", so I would say it, it's, it's pretty tall. It's on the right-hand side when you come in the back door. This is right across from the, the picture of inside to the kitchen. If I turned around in the kitchen door and took a picture this way, this is what you would see is a, a built-in, uh, looks like 2 by 6 shelving that's just built into the wall. As soon as you come in the back door, these shelving system are built in on the, the right side. Uh, this was a cell phone in this picture. There was also a wallet uh, right on top of the cell phone in another picture. Okay, and I specifically want to ask about, do you see Jaws string there in that picture? I do, it looks like kite string or something okay. right there. There's a, there's a planter and some other decorative stuff up on that shelf up here. Did you later learn what that kite string was? About five days ago, yes. And what was it? Uh, dog tags that were stamped with the defendant's information on them. And that picture was taken when? This picture was taken on the 19th of November, 2015. Uh, after I was directed to this spot to take pictures of the cell phone and Mr. Phillips's wallet. Can you on that screen point to the kite string? I don't know that it was kite string. I just, to it just looks like a string, yes. This is a picture of a United States subpoena. I think it's to a court martial or something like that. It's got the uh, deceased 
name on it, commanding him to appear in front of a court martial. This was upstairs in like uh, those older houses. When you went upstairs, they had a little foyer area that led off to different rooms upstairs. And this was on a desk upstairs in that foyer area. What exhibit number is that? This is 127, Your Honor. Comma 128. Uh, this is about a foot around blood stain in the backyard. And if you remember that first cell phone that I showed you with the blood on it, this is straight back, almost straight back, about 60 yards past that in the backyard. Uh, this is a, of course, it's a far away shot. There's another one that's further away, but this is a small caliber, I think it's Dreis or Dreisen uh, handgun sitting right next to it. This is just a far away shot to show you what the next photo will look like. One twenty-nine. This is a closer up shot of that, just walking further down that slope. Uh, this is the blood. It appeared to have run down the slope just a little bit, coagulated, uh, just like the one with the cell phone earlier, but 60 or 70 yards further back. This is a picture of that small caliber, older, older handgun. This is just a close-up of the exact same spot with the uh, coagulated suspected blood. Uh, nothing significant other than it's just a close-up of that spot. <laughs> 